Excellent. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to The Rexer Show. Today we do a little different top 10. Not your ordinary top 10 best games of all time or anything like that. Today we take a look at the top 10 screw-ups done by Arcade 1UP. Now before I get started, I want to say that Arcade 1UP has done some great things. They brought home arcades into your home at a reasonable price. Who can argue with that? But with that said, I think there's some things that they need to improve on. Most importantly, customer service and quality control. And if we don't critique them, if we don't let them know, then they get complacent and they just keep doing the same thing over and over. So no matter how big a company like Apple or Windows or how small, I feel it's important to get those mess ups out there and let them know that we're watching and we know of them. So here we go. Let's start with number 10. Number 10 is the Pac-Man Partycade. And if you didn't know about this one, Gen X Grown Up does a great video, a series of videos, showing how the emulation on certain games was lagging. Most importantly, the Galaga. But what makes this great is he goes to all these extremes to not only show that it's bad compared to MAME, which some people criticized him for saying, why are you comparing it to MAME? MAME isn't accurate, and he just couldn't understand what they were talking about. Emulation is what Arcade 1UP used, so let's compare it to MAME emulation, which is notoriously accurate, he says. He goes on to compare it to an actual arcade and finally gets all those 1UP loyalists to realize that, yes, there is some problems with this lagging emulation on the Gen 1 Partycade. Check his channel out for more videos on this issue. Number nine, the Rampage Cabinet. Man, what a dumpster fire this thing was. Not only did the game freeze on Gauntlet at stage 31, but it didn't save high scores and had other issues. But most importantly to me was this Defender setup from a control standpoint. Now, Scar Arm Productions does a nice video on the issues with this and makes fun of it going, here's how you can fix this. I use my left hand for controls, my right hand for thrust and reverse, my other right hand for hyperspace, and my other right hand for fire and everything else. Oh, it's hilarious. But whoever thought this would work, oh God, what a disaster that was. Number 8 goes back to the Partycades. A newer 8-in-1 Pac-Man Partycade came with the game Xevious on it. And if you're familiar with Xevious, it's an 8-way directional game. Yet the Partycade that this game was on came with a joystick with a 4-way directional gate that restricted movement from going diagonally. So you couldn't go in diagonal like the original game intended you to. Thanks go to Show Me Retro for quickly pointing this out and bringing it to the forefront. Number seven brings us to NBA Jam, the online edition, where apparently you didn't need to use your initials if you wanted to sync up with your buddies because it didn't work originally. Anytime you entered the initials and tried to multiplayer with maybe some of your friends, you got unsynced very quickly. And thanks to Super Game Room Dudes and P-Dubs Arcade Loft, they quickly exposed this problem and got 1UP to remedy it. Now, although there were some other minor issues with this cab, for the most part, it was a great cabinet. And special thanks go to the Super Game Room Dudes for getting Arcade 1UP on this issue with the initials and getting them to put a quick fix in. Number six is a little different mishap by Arcade 1UP. Not game related, but at CES, they put out a Golden Tee Silver Strike bowling cabinet design and then quickly removed it on day two from CES. It really wasn't spoke of ever again, with Arcade 1UP kind of putting it off, saying, yeah, maybe, well, not really. Uh, I think they had a communication error at CES and somebody quickly said, get that thing off the floor. We really don't have any plans of getting that in or getting the licensing for it. Not only not having the ability and the software and the licensing to get it done. Now, this doesn't mean it won't happen in the future. I think it will at some point, but man, they really jumped the gun on this one. Number five, the Pac-Man Giant Joystick. 
man, this really seemed like a good idea at first until people started playing it like Retro Ralph in this video and he becomes quickly aware that uh, maybe something might not be looking right while I'm playing this. Now, thanks to Retro Ralph, I think Arcade 1UP went back to the drawing board on this one and made some design changes. Maybe not for the better per se, but what I don't understand is why they didn't just make the joystick adjustable height, moving it up towards your chest, or at least some reasonable height level, uh, not to make it look so awkward. Number four, the plug and play consoles. Man, these things were hot garbage and extremely overpriced at over $40, but that's really not why they made this list. What got me is shortly before these things came out, John D, a representative from Arcade 1UP, was on many podcasts explaining how piracy and sideloading games was not their company business model and was not what Arcade 1UP was intended to do. Yet I don't see them complaining at all with all these YouTubers modding and sideloading games on their Arcade 1UPs. All that aside though, this thing originally had instructions on how to sideload your games and it was obviously built to sideload games. But Mad Little Pixel said it best when he said this. So... Yeah, I can't recommend this freaking thing. It's it's a piece of garbage in my opinion. Anybody who tells you otherwise is full of shit or just has, you know, loves mediocrity, I guess. Hey, thanks for your honesty, Mad Little Pixel. And John D, wipe that egg off your face from that we don't condone piracy bull crap. Number three. Remember that Pac-Man 40th anniversary cabinet? Man, it was a thing of beauty. But boy, you couldn't turn the damn thing down. Man, it was so loud on volume level one, people couldn't believe it. They're like, wait a second, did anybody at Arcade 1UP play this? Or maybe everybody's just hard of hearing at Arcade 1UP. Boy, I couldn't figure this one out for the life of me, how they didn't know that this thing was so loud to begin with. Now, Dreamcast Kyle quickly shows a fix here in this video with an inline volume minimizer. But who wants to go through all that? Just make the volume the right levels, please. Coming in at number two. Hey, we gotta mess up a cocktail cab, don't we? Well, this one relates to a firmware when they did an update and added games to the Miss Pac-Man cocktail cab. Well, what happened was the whole screen turned into a horizontal orientation and made the game completely unplayable. Thanks to unqualified critics who quickly exposed this flaw from the firmware update, they ended up getting on this really quick and fixing it in the end. Now, before I get to number one, I just want to say Arcade 1UP has fixed the majority of these problems and kudos to them for doing that. Now, I missed a lot of uh, issues on here as well, including missing plexiglass in the beginning and vinyls wearing out. There were sounds missing on Street Fighter and there was high scores that wouldn't save and games that froze and a whole bunch of issues uh, with Arcade 1UP. So feel free to put in the comments any of the ones you experienced or the ones that you thought were the worst. Now getting to number one, here's one that I just couldn't understand how they could miss this and how this was even possible that it happened. Here we go, the number one screw up by Arcade 1UP. Coming in at a firm number one, it's related to the Super Pac-Man arcade cabinet. Now when I saw this, I just couldn't believe it. The game came with games like Galaxian and Galaga, but when you played those games, you had to use your left hand for the fire button and your right hand for moving the joystick, completely opposite than what the original arcade was set up to do. Now anybody who has ever played these games before knows that the fire button needs to be on the right hand, which is so confusing to me as how not one person at Arcade 1UP figured out that, man, I think we have the fire button on the wrong side here. I guess that means nobody at Arcade 1UP plays their own machines, or maybe they just don't know anything about arcades. Either way, it's pretty embarrassing that this machine made it to market with this complete screw up on it. Hey, thanks for watching the Rexel Show. I hope you enjoyed this video.